The new OS 19.1, based on Android 12L, was recently released on the OnePlus 7 series, which is lucky, as I initially messed around with 18.1 and it wasn't the best. Lineage OS has been around since 2016, tending to lean towards a more privacy-focused version of Android. And with that, by default, it does not come with Google Apps. And much of the tracking you may or may not worry about that goes along with it. You can, of course, sideload Google Apps if, like me, you've basically sold your soul to them. Everything here looks very stock-like, with all the settings and menus sticking to that style. The launcher is still the Lineage Trebuchet, which is pretty basic, but gives you enough flexibility and options without bogging things down. Speed felt great around the UI, not getting any hiccups with any transitions, with all the animations feeling slick. Just ensure you have smooth display turned on for that 90Hz goodness, as this wasn't on by default and made things feel a touch sluggish. There were no performance issues with any apps I used, all working exactly as I expected, which is a relief, as I experienced bad Chrome slowness back on the previous 18.1 build. Benchmarks all looked good, with Geekbench 5 returning slightly above average 7T Pro scores. The throttling benchmark showed no issues over 30 minutes, and in Don't Kill My App, it returned a perfect 100. There was a slight inconsistency with the nightlight though. It worked absolutely fine, but it's noticeable it's not active on the lock screen, so you can see quite a colour shift when unlocking at night. The auto brightness was also a bit inconsistent, not settling and often swinging wildly. One shot auto brightness is included at least to offset this, settling on a brightness level at the moment of an unlock. With Google Apps installed, I had little issue interacting with any of my usual Google stuff. Everything worked flawlessly right from the start. Except Google Pay. The way this ROM is set up, it won't pass safety net or force it to use the basic check, so Google Pay won't work unless you root. This also means that Netflix won't even be an option to download if you still use it, but Disney Plus works just fine. Installing Google Apps does also leave you with a lot of duplicates, but at least these can be disabled or hidden to keep the bloat reasonable. It's not all doom and gloom though, as my banking app worked just fine, as does Microsoft Teams. And while my Widevine reverted to L3 when flashing, you should be able to achieve L1. Fingerprint Scanner was also excellent, being one of the best I've used on my OnePlus in regard to speed and accuracy. Performance does dip while outside though, but who goes outside these days? Lineage's privacy focus may not be as pronounced as it used to be with so many of those features baked into Android now, but there are still a number of extra features that keep that goal in mind. We have the ability to scramble the pin code to foil any shoulder snoops and the ability to hide apps from the launcher or secure them behind an unlock. A surprisingly thoughtful addition that I haven't seen before is the dialer having a list of numbers if you find yourself in need of some help. These look to be localised, which is really cool, as I expected to just get American numbers. The call log also won't keep track of any of these, so they don't keep taunting you, or if it's better off hidden from someone else. Rounding out the privacy focus, we have a trust dashboard, which has a few options to restrict functions, but mostly checks to ensure that all your basic privacy safeguards are enabled. Other features included are all pretty typical of what I expect in custom ROMs these days. We get some extra gestures, tweaking of buttons and the status bar. OnePlus gestures are also included, along with some options for the alert slider. We do miss out on the horizon light though, which was always a fun use of the curved display. We also oddly miss out on customizable colour theming too. It does at least take a shade from your wallpaper, but you have no ability to change or customise it, other than changing to another wallpaper. The digital wellbeing module is also nowhere to be seen. The dashboard was nice enough if you used it to see where your time and clicks went, but the part I missed most was the bedtime mode, able to turn off your always on display and go into do not disturb mode while charging overnight. 
closest I got was using scheduled do not disturb instead. Speaking of that always on display though, because of the missing bedtime mode, I couldn't find myself using it for long. But even when I did, as expected, the battery hit was significant. For a device this old, I'm sure everyone's batteries are starting to age a little, so the drain gets less acceptable, even at my 82%. With the always on display turned on, I can only make it off the charger for around 13 and a half hours with four hours of screen on time. Turning off this feature though, at least became reasonable, lasting my full 16 hour days with around five hours of screen on time and still leaving around 20% remaining. For the heavy users, warp charge is completely intact, giving me 70% in 30 minutes and 90% after 60. Rounding things out with some quick photo samples, the stock camera of course works in a pinch, but Gcam works even better. It just offers better dynamic range, more detail and less noise, which becomes even more pronounced in night shots. Lineage OS ended up getting a much better rap than it was going to with its previous version, but it's still not the best ROM for the 7 series for my use. Its unique features are excellent for the privacy minded and anyone wanting to de-google their life should give it a try. But for the Google inclined, the hit of needing to root to get full usability for Google Pay, plus being on Android 12 when 13 is available in other ROMs means this doesn't work as a daily driver for me. Cheers for watching guys. If you found this helpful, chuck us a like to help feed the almighty algorithm. Otherwise, until next time, take it easy, stay casual.